Well, earnings season has certainly reasserted itself as a driver for stocks and the market, and that's exactly how my next guest is picking stocks right now. He's focusing on companies who got punished for growing balance sheets in 2021 and should get rewarded for that this year. For more, let's welcome in Jason Brady. He's president and CEO of Thornburg Investment Management. Did I get that right, Jason, in terms of how you're looking, uh, looking at the balance sheets? Yeah, look, you're looking at a market which in 2021 um, was much more concerned or interested in in multiple expansion. And in 2022 is returning to the idea that earnings have to support that multiple expansion. And, and frankly, in 2021, earnings did support a lot of multiple expansion. It was, it was a great year for earnings. But what we're seeing today is companies across a number of different sectors. Obviously, we can talk about Netflix, but, but frankly, some of the banks are disappointing on earnings, and that's creating a, a weight uh, and a move from kind of a hopes and dreams market to maybe more of a where's my cash today kind of market. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the names in particular that you would like here. And I mean, you know, not that earnings season isn't a big driver, but it's been incredible. You go back to J.P. Morgan or even Jeffries before that, where we're seeing very large, 8 percent, 10 percent, obviously Netflix, even more of an outlier. Right. J.P. Morgan is an interesting is an interesting name. They I wouldn't say they disappointed on earnings exactly. But what we started to see was the effect of some wage pressure on on their margins. And that is going to be something that we're going to see moving forward for across a number of different companies that rely on skilled labor. J.P. Morgan is, however, one of those beneficiaries of higher volatility in the form of what I would view as a time that trading revenue is likely to go up, a disappointment in this prior quarter, and obviously rates rising, which is something that I think is also uh, going to be a future of the markets going forward. Netflix, a really interesting one. Um, Netflix is one of those where you wonder if correction is, is a great, uh, great term. I'd rather be buying Netflix here than Peloton. I mean, frankly, the Netflix chart looks like a good Peloton workout, whereas <laughs> Peloton chart looks a whole lot like a, a, a cool down. Yeah, it looks uh, like a right run now, I want to be Netflix on, yeah. is, Right, exactly. Netflix is valued similarly to Disney, which seems much more reasonable than trying to put a multiple on negative earnings. Give us a couple more names, Jason, or, or parts of the market that you think are interesting here. Sure. So at the end of the day, it feels like the Fed put uh, wine in a box and called it champagne. And what we're trying to do is, is figure out how much of a headache we're going to get from that. Looking at Apple as an example, not, so, not a name that we really love. If that returns to multiples of the last decade, that's down 50, even though it's in a correction today. We're looking at names like Visa. Visa has been struggling relative to the marketplace but it's, a, it's, it's going to benefit from continued transactions. And in our view, fintech is something that seems to be bought by large financial institutions as, as opposed to uh, massively dis disrupting Visa's terrific network. So there's another name that's, that's interesting in the financial space. And a final thought on the markets overall. I mean, where, how do you sort of foresee this shaking out for the next few weeks? Are you getting more opportunistic, looking for, you know, finding more companies a la Netflix or, or whatnot that look attractive to you versus the t more difficult environment, you could say, of 2021? At Thornburg, we are looking at the, at the fundamentals, of course. And as you said, we're going to get a lot of earnings uh, news coming up. So that's really going to drive the, the sentiment and that's going to drive the market, in our view, again, moving from that hopes and dreams to the cash today. So as we're looking at uh, how, how investors should, should position themselves, it's much more about names that you can forecast earnings as opposed to names where you can forecast sentiment. And I think that change is one that's underway in the market, partly due to the Fed and partly due to just a, a collapsing under its own weight. So a that's, that's where we're spending our time. Absolutely. Right. Jason, thanks for joining us today. It's good to see you.